Red Shoes 73 writes, I'm scrapping my childhood school days and came across two Polaroid pictures from the early 80s. Anything I should know before taping these down? I thought about taking a picture of the Polaroid and printing it to use in the book, but one of them is fairly dark and I don't want the hassle if it's not necessary. Glitter Girl, can you help Red Shoes 73 preserve her problematic Polaroids? Of course I can. Let's have a look uh, quickly at a few different things to keep in mind when scrapbooking with Polaroids. And later on, I'll talk about some more recent instant photo things as well. But at the moment, let's start with older Polaroids. So these are the same age as the ones being discussed on the message board. These are early 80s. And um, I have a a big stack that are mostly from Christmases because my family seemed to have really brought out the Polaroid camera at Christmas. So most of my Polaroid photos involve Santa Claus, the Christmas uh, train at the shopping center, and opening presents under the tree. Now this one I'm going to use today which is not um, exceedingly Christmassy because I want to journal about um, the bicycle. This was my first bike and I want to write about that but I can tell that it's Christmas but it's a little less Christmassy than the ones that have Santa Claus and things like that in them. So um, I'm gonna go away from red and green and and write uh, some more non Christmassy memories. So I'm gonna go with uh, some pinks and turquoise and using some Bella Boulevard, basic gray, paper cottage and then some papers from Webster's Pages Girl Land collection. So you can see this color scheme that I'm going to go with. Some very, very girly colors. And some pink letter stickers, some turquoise glittery letter stickers from uh, Amy Tangerine. And some bits and pieces from American Crafts, Basic Gray, all sorts of different things. To keep in mind, um, I do scrapbook the original Polaroid. What I do is to take a picture or scan. I don't have a scanner, so personally I just use my camera and take a photograph of the photo. Um, but if you have a scanner, that might be just as easy. So then I have a digital master. I can put that with my photo archive, and that way I have a digital record of everything, including my older photos. So whether it's a normal print that I don't have a negative for, or a Polaroid itself, I will go ahead and take a photo and add that to my records. That way I still have that digital copy somewhere in case the page goes wrong or something happens to the album or anything disastrous in the future, I still have that backup, the photo isn't lost. But then I go ahead and I scrapbook the original because I'd rather have the photo in the album than not. And there are really only a few things to keep in mind with Polaroids. The biggest rule is don't cut into the frame. The chemicals that created the picture are kept in this little pocket and you don't want to um, cut anything here because it's not like a standard photograph. It's not printed on a paper. The ink is actually in this little packet to make the photo. It's a very complicated chemical process, but basically don't cut it. If for some reason you don't like the idea of the frame in your page design, you're better off to put other layers on top and just leave a square frame so that you can see the image rather than cutting it cutting it apart. And, and it, sometimes when you cut the image apart it may look fine at first but when I was a little I really enjoyed cutting my um, my Polaroids into funny shapes and I know that when I was a kid they all uh, the color would wash away they would smear all sorts of weird things would happen to the image so don't um, don't take them apart essentially. Leave it as it is. One thing that I have noticed with a lot of my pictures from the 80s is that the bit of glue on this very bottom piece here has come loose. So I've been, as I scrapbook, I've been just putting um, a little bit of scrapbook glue to hold that in place. I don't think anything will leak out here because there is still a seal that seems quite tight. Um, but. I just, I don't, I like it a little bit tidier than that, so I've been gluing it shut again. But that's the only problem I've been having. And um, other than that, all the Polaroids seem to have kept good color. Um, they do tend to be darker, but that's what Polaroid was like in, in that era. Um, the Polaroid film would take a darker image, especially if you were using it indoors. So don't worry. And when you take your, um, if you take a photograph of this and it comes out a bit dark, you can lighten it on the computer just like you would lighten any other digital image. So you may be able to pull a bit more detail out of the shot than what appears to your naked eye in the Polaroid anyway. Okay, so I'm gonna get started and go ahead and scrapbook this one. And then after this layout, stick with me. It's a bit of a, a special bonus, longer episode this week. And we're gonna talk about modern, um, current ways to do instant photography and all your different options there. Starting with a pretty simple background with three pattern papers, this um, 
turquoise grid paper from Basic Gray Paper Cottage, and then some pink clouds from Bella Boulevard, and the purple chevron from Webster's Pages. Then I just want to add a strip across the join, and I love stripes for pulling all the different colors in the page together. So everything else so far is single colors, but this strip is going to have all the colors that are represented in the whole layout. So it'll help bring everything together. But one thing I really enjoy with um, stripes is doing a little bit of a layer on top of that same pattern. So I've cut just a one inch strip to go across there, and then I've also brought out just a large scallop border punch and with this I can create a layer that will be the same stripe and I can layer it right on top of that one inch strip just for a little bit of a subtle pattern on top. So just take this and cut it into a straight line. And I can add a little bit of ink to the edges if I want to bring out that shape a little bit more. And I've inked the top of the other strip, so I need to ink the top here. And then I'm just going to attach it right on top of this strip. It's matching up the patterns exactly. So it's not a huge deal. It's just a really subtle detail where you can see the extra layer on top. Just gives it a bit more texture in person. So then I'll attach that right over the top of the join and so the other papers here are 11 inches across, but this one is the full 12. And I can use the chevron to get it straight across the page. And that gives me a good starting point because I've really defined the colors and I've got um, some horizontal elements to keep things grounded. And I can go ahead and add my Polaroid and all the embellishment and journaling that I want to include from there. Just wanted to break up that pink, so I've added a little bit more aqua pattern paper, this one from Webster's Pages. And then the back of that purple chevron is this yellow print, which also has this detail on it. But I just wanted to use the yellow with the purple to bring this together. So now I have a horizontal piece and a vertical piece, and that can give me a great place to put my photo and bring everything together. So I've got sort of an L shape here, and and I also have a background layer to add in some journaling boxes and all sorts of bits like that. A good place here for a title. So just a little insight into where I'm going with all that. And I can go ahead and get these pieces in place. Now, I have this piece which I thought was really apt to to the bicycle being a gift and it's from this um, snippets pad from basic gray clippings collection which has all sorts of different pieces that you can cut out and so just using that small one thought I would put that on the side of the photo or perhaps underneath here I haven't really left enough room to do it that way so I'll do it underneath the photo and then I'll add another piece in there so for this, I then want to start looking at can I, how many layers can I cross because that will help bring all the pieces of the, of the layering together. So if I'm going to place this here and then I need another kind of piece that's going to go there. So I'll start to look at what I've already pulled out. I've got some border stickers here. So they might be a good combination. Let's go with this pink piece here. And I can bring that to this side. And then the photo can go on top. Then I'm going to work my journaling boxes here and my title in this space below. So I think all of that will work quite easily. Just 
sealing the bottom of that print back up. And using that horizontal line for grounding and this vertical line to frame that little die cut off to the side. Now for journaling boxes, I pulled out a few different random bits and pieces. I have this bicycle die cut from the American Craft Shoreline collection that's a current summer collection. I also had this journaling box from a, an older American Crafts collection that's not um, available anymore, but it's just blue with some lines and had a little bicycle in the corner. So um, I know I don't normally do themed things, so but every once in a while it, it just seems like if there's a bicycle and I'm going to write the story about the first bicycle, then maybe I should go ahead and use some. I'm not I'm not completely sure if I'm going to use this big one, but I quite like the subtle bit in um, in the blue box. And then this um, Bella Boulevard sticker, which is from this it's from the same collection as this, but I've been using quite a lot of these, so um, they're all cut apart with what I have left. So I think what I'll do is cut this so that it's not a speech bubble anymore. I just much prefer the planar rectangles than the speech bubbles. So I can start to layer these in sort of this sort of placement. That should work. And then I have a couple little stickers that are from the basic gray collection that should work well too. I thought this um, one with the turquoise at the top here and maybe even this um, little layered border sticker here which actually is a really quite a good fit to go across the Polaroid if I want to add something on top. Now of course at this point if you don't want to use the original use a printout and you can either use it as a square or you can print out the whole thing so that it looks like the actual Polaroid and just print it onto photo paper or cardstock whatever you like and you don't have to scrapbook the original if that feels like too much pressure or if you're not 100% happy with all the pages you're making and that makes you a little nervous to scrapbook with the original go ahead and use a, a copy and don't worry about it one bit but if you are happy with what you're making and you're really stuck with storage space and you'd rather have the original in the album then use the original just a judgment call on whatever is best for your system before I put these two layers down, I'm realizing that there's an awful lot of pastel shades here and nothing a little bit darker to, um, to bring it all together. So the back of this striped paper has this multi-tag print and it has some pieces that have a little bit more punch in the color. So I'm just going to cut out one of these tags to use as a layer below those other two pieces so that there's a bit of contrast in the color. And that can keep it from looking far too washed out. And then I can add these other pieces on top. adding black ink to everything today because it didn't seem to be a particularly brown friendly layout so everything is inked in black. I'll just use this one to get my spacing right because I want that to go on the edge of this one. Same thing here with the ink. And then it's your choice. Um, with a Polaroid, I do tend to put, I try if I can remember, to put things on the layer underneath rather than on top, just in case I do ever decide that I want to um, take that picture off. But I'm not perfect about it, and I certainly have pages where I've put things right over the top of the Polaroid frame. So just a choice. And now this gives me quite a, a good space to journal, and I can journal more here if I decide that I need a bit more room. So I'll go ahead and start with the title. So I've got these flat letter stickers from Bella Boulevard. And then I'm going to use the thickers on top. 
So we've used three different lettering styles for the title. And if you do have this Bella Boulevard alphabet, it comes in a few different colors. Make sure you use the Y because the Y is this great, um, crazy character in, in, um, in conjunction with the rest of a, a quite blocky font. So find a word that you can spell with a Y and, and use those stickers because the Y is the nicest letter on the sheet. It's, it's very cool. Um, and then uh, the turquoise glittery stickers, and these come in a few different colors too, from the Amy Tangerine collection. Um, these have both the lowercase and the uppercase on the same sheet. And you can get a really different look, whether you use all, all caps, um, some uppercase, some lowercase, or all lowercase. So it's quite a versatile sheet and you get a lot of stickers. And um, I've already done two words from this, um, but you can tell I'm going to get a, an awful lot more. Okay, um, then I need some sort of horizontal element here because I've got this gap in between this horizontal element of the pattern paper and the stickers. They, they're a bit floaty. So I've just pulled in some turquoise washi tape. to add that there and I'm thinking I'll find a smaller piece of some sort of accent, maybe some jewels or um, or a border sticker or something that I can add immediately underneath there to perhaps bring a little bit of either the purple or the pink into that bit there. So I'm just going to keep that in mind as I continue and in fact why don't I just stop now because that very next border um, border sticker on this sheet is yellow with a purple zigzag so that's perfect. So if I can just get an idea of how long I want that to be. I can bring this piece in here. In fact, I don't want as much as I cut. And now I have everything a bit more connected and there's no awkward gaps in between. I still might come in with some pink rhinestones or something underneath there, I think. I've got some. Okay, um, so now I'm ready to add all my journaling and um, some dimensional bits and pieces here and there to finish the embellishment. With my writing all in place, I'm starting to realize there's quite a big gap here on that diagonal, so I'm going to use that as my uh, secondary embellishment, and I want to be able to repeat some of the patterns that I put in the other um, in the other placement, so here underneath the title. So we're going to start with that same washi tape and uh, border sticker combination. And we can run some washi tape here along the join of the two pattern papers. And that border sticker with purple and yellow we can add a bit more of that as well. And then I have that sticker that I had picked out at the beginning. And I can put that on some foam squares so that I have a bit of dimension up here. And then I was able to find a few little gems so that I could add those um, below the title. So I'm going to repeat that too. Someone on the board was asking how different scrapbookers store their bling. Um, so here's mine. It's in a little basket and it's just all bits and pieces that are loose. Um, and that's what I have. So um, I had some little purple gems that I just used and put back. So if I can find them in my little basket of things, here they are. So I had one little string left. And I think I'll just use part of that. And then I had just some little pink ones on their own, and I can put that on the other side of the sticker and kind of bring all that together. So I'm not repeating the entire embellishment exactly as it is, but using the same colors, the same pieces, just uh, changing the placement a little bit. Just using odd numbers. I used five at the bottom. I'm going to use three here. And this gives me a few little gaps that are great to go back in with some small stamps or with ink and um, ink splatters, whatever you prefer. So I'm going to have a look in my stamp collection and see if I could find maybe a few little words or small motifs that I could just come back in here in these two places to finish off um, this page.
Having a look at my stamps, I found that the Studio Calico sets had quite a few different words and phrases that would be good um, to fit into a page like this. And all different sizes and um, dimensions, so that I could look for different gaps and find different things that would fill. So I just pulled out those three sets, and I'm going to start with this um, Dream Big set and or stamp. I'm going to put it up here, and I'm using some pink ink to stamp on top of the pink paper because I don't want it to be overwhelming. I just want it to be quite subtle. So I can see where I'm stamping and just fit in the gap there. And then I want to add something to that bottom space as well. So I think perhaps this snapshot stamp, it's a little circle with the word snapshot in the negative. I think that would be a good one to put down by the title, but I'm going to need to change the color of the ink to match that. So I'll have a look and maybe try stamping it on here on the off cut of, of the same pattern so that I could try maybe a yellow and a purple and see which one I like best. In the end, I found I wasn't really keen on how the yellow or the purple stamped on top of that paper. So I went with Plan B and I went back to the pink paper and the pink ink and uh, stamped it on that and then used a punch to cut it out. And my fat, final little touch is that I'm going to add some of these tiny little wood veneer stars to both areas of embellishment. And I'm going to use just my normal adhesive roller to pop them in place. I just tack a few dots from the roller and then it sticks right to the page just fine for me. Okay, so with this first page all done, I've added um, those little stars and just one little badge to finish off this cluster at the top. And then I wanted to have a look at different kinds of instant photos that are available today and what your options are because the Polaroid, um, as we know it, it, is a little different these days. So some options, and now you're going to laugh at how many cameras I'm going to put on this desk, but just go with it. I have uh, more cameras than I need, and a lot of them are not uh, working cameras. They, I just like how they look. So Polaroid and um, Instax is the other option now. So these two cameras are the Polaroid that we kind of grew up with. This is one that would have been around um, in the 80s and, and earlier in the 70s. This was what was um, what was popular when Polaroid closed its doors. And that's these are, are both the kind that produce this sort of print that we're familiar with. Um, this one is a lot more modern than this one. Now, these cameras do still work, but Polaroid doesn't make film anymore. Um, there is a new company that's making that film and it's called The Impossible Project. And they sell film that will fit these two kinds of cameras. But what you need to do is A, you need to be prepared to pay um, a, a pretty hefty premium for this film. You're going to pay between um, one and two dollars or one and two pounds per shot. And it's not going to be guaranteed perfect. And um, this is experimental film and that's part of the deal that you don't quite know what you're going to get and you may need to tweak your settings on your camera and if, you're, if you've used a Polaroid there's not a lot to tweak so sometimes it means maybe you're going to try and put something over the lens or you're going to make sure you're shooting a lot of light or in the dark and things like that um, so that you can, you can see how you go with each shot. So it is an option, and that's called the Impossible Project. They do different um, sets, but do be aware with your camera what model you have. So this um, PX70 film is made for SX70 cameras. Now this film will fit in the more modern camera, but the pictures won't come out very well because it's, this film has been created for the older camera. Does that make sense? I hope so. So if you... If you find a Polaroid but you're not aware of what kind it is, Google it, find pictures, and um, the model number is usually somewhere on the camera and then you can find a wealth of information out there. Um, and you can find Polaroid cameras that are being sold um, as refurbished and then you know they're in working order but they're very expensive because it's a real specialist market. Or you can go the thrifty route and I found this one several years ago for two pounds at the um, Cancer Research Thrift Store. <laughs> And 
you take the risk then because you can't tell by looking at a Polaroid usually you can't tell if it's going to work or not it can look perfectly fine and then when you put the first roll of film in it nothing comes out so it's up to you you can pay um, a hefty premium to have a camera that you know is is being sold as in working order or you can um, maybe buy five or six different two dollar cameras and see if any of them work and um, it's just up to you okay so you do have an option of using an actual old Polaroid camera with um, Polaroid film but it is you're either going to have old expired Polaroid film which does still work but it will create some interesting different color combinations that you don't expect um, or you can look at some more modern um, cameras. Now if you go even older you might find a Polaroid like this which has bellows if I can if you can see the bellows there and it folds down flat and these show up in thrift stores and garage sales and all sorts of things like that not uncommonly boot sales and all sorts of things like that um, but if you google this camera you'll find there isn't film for this camera this is not the the cartridge that we're used to in that other one and you end up with this this door at the back if I can get it open and this as you can see is very different than um, than this setup where the where the film comes out the front and um, and basically if you if you look for details from people who are real Polaroid experts there's nothing being made at the moment that will let you use this easily you can however um, take a camera like this and take it apart and make it work with other sorts of film if you're really into taking things apart or you can just have it as um, something that's pretty on the shelf if you like the way it looks and people have started to do all sorts of other things with this particular model like you can put a light bulb inside the bellows and use it as a, a night light and all sorts of different things like that and um, so if you like how, I, how they look and you find one that's cheap in it, at a thrift store then then go for it but don't expect to get one with bellows and expect to be able to put film in it because it doesn't exist okay then other cameras that you can buy today Fuji has two options they do the mini they their their Polaroid equivalent is called Instax and they do a mini size like this which is what comes out of the camera that's this size. This is an older model and I've never upgraded it. The new model is um, is not as deep as this. It's a bit more flat. And to turn this on, the lens pops out. To turn it off, the lens goes in. It's that simple. And just like with a Polaroid, um, everything comes in a pack. So your batteries, your ink, your paper, it's all in one little pack. You don't have to um, take care of separate things. You're not, you're not having to put... Uh, separate batteries in the camera anything like that you have really easy settings like um, sunny sort of sunny and cloudy <laughs> so that's that's as hard as it gets and then it's just look through the viewfinder and push the button and they do the same technology in a wider format which is kind of landscape wise so it looks it's about the same as two uh, of the minis uh, side by side so you you have a wider image there they don't do a square like the Polaroid so you've got the, the smaller credit card size or the widescreen version. Okay, or different options. <laughs> you can also print instant photos with a digital camera. There's a few little, di a few different gadgets that let you do that. One is the Polaroid Zinc camera, which looks like a Polaroid like this. It looks like this, but it has a printer inside of it, and it it prints out a um. A square image that's more like what we know and um, it is quite an expensive product but if you're if you have the money to spend on such a gadget you can look up the Polaroid Zinc camera and this one is by Fuji but not available in Europe or North America you have to order it from Asia if you want one and it's um, called the Pivi printer and I'm going to use this uh, for the layout today, so I'm just going to show you how it works. It attaches to your digital camera. It will not attach to a phone or an iPhone, but it will attach to a camera that has this sort of mini USB jack. So it's a regular USB on the on this end and a mini USB on this end. Um, you turn it on, and it's the same sort of thing. You buy a dedicated um, little packet which has a cartridge full of the different papers and inks but this does require either being plugged in or a battery I use it with batteries and and have no trouble there okay so then on my camera I can I can pull up the picture that I want to print and 
and then it will give me these options. It'll show me the image I'm going to print. It gives me this little print screen because it's plugged into here. And then when I'm happy, I know I can just hit the print button and it'll tell me not to disconnect it. And it takes a little bit of time, not a huge amount. Um, and then it will give me a little print. And the only thing to really keep in mind is that the prints will be the same size as these, but the film packets are different. You can't take an Instax film packet that's for the camera and put it in the printer. If that makes sense, it, ha it has different things inside even though the finished print is very similar. So don't think that you can just swap um, back and forth. So I have my little Instax print printed on the Pivi printer and I'm ready to go, but this does create one problem and that's the idea of this tiny little photo on the big 12 by 12 page. Now some people love that look and other people really, really don't like it. And if using one little photo in the 12 by 12 page really wants to send you running for the hills, then um, consider a few other options. You could use a smaller page size. You can mix the Instax prints with um, larger, more standard prints. So you could use it with four by six or an even an eight by 10. They mix and match really well together. You can overlap it and then it ends up um, a little bit like an embellishment as well. Um, or you can just give it a try with the big 12 by 12 page. It does give you plenty of room for journaling, plenty of room for embellishment. It's just a case of deciding what will work best for you. So um, if if this weren't to work, uh, um, if this weren't going to work at all, then I could just change the page size and maybe uh, balance it in my layout that way. But one way I do look to include smaller photos on a 12 by 12 page is to look for elements like this that are already printed on the paper that can create something that holds that photo into the page and gives it that little bit of scale that makes it all seem okay. So this pattern paper from the original Amy Tangerine collection has this um, this part of the design. Your eye is already going to that corner and everything else around here is all very neutral. So I've just used a craft knife to roughly cut around the outside of that design and I can tuck the photo in here. I'm going to tuck some other paper layers too. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and create that whole 12 by 12 page with that one little photo and I know that that's not going to be to everybody's style but I hope there's something in the finished page that you can take away even if you would rather use a different um, different ratio of photo to 12 by 12 page. Creating a page like this is really really simple because you can just add a few layers tucked underneath that photo and then or underneath this little cutout design and then tuck the photo in as well. So I've already got room for journaling. I've got a darker color anchoring this and, and pulling and that darker color both above and below the photo so that your eye is going to go there. And I just wanted to give you a little bit of a preview to the Ready, Set, Go collection. This piece is one um, from that and this is the new Amy Tangerine that will be in the store shortly. And there are lots of lovely patterns and I'll be showing you more of that soon. But I'm just using that one little piece here and this is also from that new collection. Some little speech bubbles and boxes on the other. So just a, a nice little look to show Show you that the new collection will go with the older papers that are already in your stash. So I'm going to go ahead and adhere that photo and I want to add some pop dots to the top so that I can have a bit of a layered effect so it looks a bit more dimensional. I'm just going to tuck that so that the camera is framing that edge. And then I have room to put a title over here and I wanted to have a look through. This is the, the, the sticker book for the original Amy Tangerine collection. And I have a few bits and pieces left so I was going to put them to use. a few of these elements on the foam squares as well just to give a little bit of difference to what's flat and what's not and this also means that I can move things around on the page until I'm happy with everything's placement. I've got a little October afternoon 
paper label there, a little spot. And then maybe I can add my title lettering over here. So it would be nice to have something that's kind of horizontal. And on that sheet um, that I took this box from, there's also a yellow box there. So that seems to be a good one. And everything on this page I'm doing with brown ink on the outside since I've got that brown accent in the paper. So I could layer that up there. And it would be nice if I could bring in some of that pink. So go back to this sticker book and see what I've got in that color. I've got that little airplane. That might be a good one. Yep, I think that's the best. can layer these. I'll just go ahead and stick this and then I have to commit. Okay. So that's how that's going to be. And that also gives me some elements that are a bit more straight and horizontal where I have all these pieces that are angled. So it's not so much angling that your eye is going to get tired or, or wonder why you're looking at everything a little bit crooked. And that can just fit in that gap and it, it, it overlaps all those layers so it brings everything together. I can add my title here and my writing here and then just any little dimensional finishing touches on top. All the writing's on, so now I'm just looking for finishing touches, and I went back to the first stamp set from this collection and picked one of those that I'm going to add in this space over here. But what I also want to do is bring this blue over to this side. So I brought the pink over here, but now I want to bring the blue over to this side. So I had a look, and, and the papers come with these strips at the bottom. So this is one of the strips from another of the pattern papers in that same collection, the one that looks like clouds. And that's that same blue and the same Hello Friend graphic, so I'm just going to add that to the other side of the page and stamp a little brown feather on the background before I add that piece in. And then, so the feather will be kind of here. And then I'm thinking I need a little bit more yellow there as well. So let's put that feather in. So I'm using just some brown distress ink for that. And I just wanted kind of a, a faint idea of that design because I'm going to add things on top. So now I want to look for something yellow. Let's see what else is left in the sticker book that has the yellow color. I've got a large yellow sticker there, but that's a bit much. I've got this sunshine, perhaps. That might work, because it's round like this one that I used over there. So I'll go with that, and I'll add this piece flat, and this time I'll, I'll pop the blue up from the top of the page. So let's see where I can put this. So cover up a fair amount of the feather there and then add some foam squares to the back of this one. And I'll trim the edge of this, or oh, it's a sticker so I can just bend this side back. Then, and last little bit I wanted to do was this side of the design goes off the page. This one doesn't. So I'm thinking that I'll add a little bit of the pink polka dot to this side. And this is um, just some pink polka dot washi tape to make this side go off the page as well. 
And then I can also add a little bit of that on this side too so that the two sides have that in common. And that's pretty much it. A really simple but quick page with that instant photo. Something to give a try and that, that means that it's challenge time for this week. So if you have any instant photos, be they old or new, and consider putting them on a layout. If you don't have any instant photos and that's not your sort of thing, then take design inspiration from an instant photo. Maybe um, print one with a digital frame around it and uh, cut it out or you can use the Heidi Swap Insta frames that are um, designed to create this frame or in the in the square shape over a normal um, a normal image that you would print as you print all your other photos so either from a developer or on your home printer or just um, cutting paper into the Polaroid shape so that you have that little border at the bottom take some sort of inspiration from the idea of instant photos and give it a try and I'd love to see your work in the gallery this week Thanks for watching. Join us next week for the continuing adventures of Glitter Girl and the ongoing mystery of the scrapbooker behind the mask at twopeasinabucket.com.